Throughout history, iconic figures have been identified by single portraits. Through studying these images, it has allowed me to see the way the world has evolved. Such iconic figures are often known for their great contributions to society, be it through scientific discovery, war, ingenuity, or creative arts. But there's one thing that preserves their image forever, photography. And today, I'm looking at an image that for many defines the industrial age. And that image is of Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Isambard Kingdom Brunel was a famous engineer born in 1806. He helped build Britain through the manufacture of ships, bridges, tunnels and vast railways. Brunel was at the heart of Victorian Britain and we can still see many of his amazing monuments today. Now this picture was taken in 1857 while Brunel was working on one of his most audacious projects. Brunel certainly um, elevated or changed people's perception of the engineering uh, profession and that has a lot to do with what he managed to achieve but also due to his charisma, skill and his character and how much he managed to push the limits really to what it meant to be an engineer in Victorian Britain at the time. Um, he was, as I say, a charismatic man, um, uh, took a lot of risk and he invested in his own projects as well, uh, which made him uh, have many friends but also some enemies at times. Uh, but certainly the Great Eastern Project is one that um, has a lot of controversy attached to it. Um, there are some wonderful stereoscopic images in the collections of the Brunel Institute that illustrate um, the, uh, the development of the project and certainly his diaries and um, letters, correspondence from that time, show what a tense time there would have been for him, his team and um, Scott Russell as well who was the shipbuilder involved. Eleni went on to tell me that the picture was taken during the later stages of the SS Great Eastern's construction. Both Brunel and Howlett had a great understanding of the power of an image and how they could both command influence to the photographic medium. Every aspect of the photograph had a great deal of thought put into it, from the framing of the chains to Brunel's stance. How did Robert Howlett do this? To find this out, I will need someone to deconstruct the photograph and to decipher every detail of Howlett's portrayal behind the great Brunel. Well, we've got Brunel in his stovepipe hat, wearing his suit uh, with cigar in hand, but you start to look a bit more deeply into that image and his trousers are mud spattered, his boots are mud spattered, and what it starts to tell us is that here's a man who's not just the boss, not just this great engineer and entrepreneur, but someone who's very actively involved in the construction of that ship and working there and getting his hands dirty. And that's really unusual in that type of Victorian photograph. And you look a bit more beyond the background, well you've got those fantastic chains behind him, you know, signifying strength and importance and Brunel's there leaning up tall, you know, he's actually a very short man but there he looks proud, he looks, looks big and it's about, about conveying this impression of someone that is at the top of his game. Well, Howlett's really interesting because he's come to photography as a photographer, he's not come from that art tradition, and he approaches his subject in a very different way to, I think, any other photographer that would have been around at that time. He's what I think we would call the first of the modern photographer. He's putting Brunel right against the ship, he's cropping in very close to him, and he's working with his subject, which I think is really important, that this was a two-way process between Brunel and Howlett to create something that would firstly stand the test of time, but secondly would act as a PR device for Brunel and what Howlett has managed to do is create something that has stood that test of time in a, in a very good way. Photography appears to have progressed so far and Robert Howlett seems to have influenced so much of what we see today. How was that photograph taken and how much work had to be done by Howlett to take it?
There are still people today that practice 19th century photography methods. I have found someone that has taken so much inspiration, he recreated a catalogue of images imitating Howlett's approach and style. This is David White, a senior lecturer of editorial photography at Falmouth University. It's undoubtedly iconic. It's a, first, it's, it's a beautiful picture. It's an incredibly intriguing picture. The first time you see it, you have to ask, um, if you, you know, if, imagine taking yourself back to the time that you first saw it. That might be quite tricky, because I remember I was probably, I don't know, I was in primary school the first time I saw it. It's, it's, it's ingrained in our culture. Um, the idea of Brunel was a very powerful man, he can't even be bothered to look at the photographer. That's essentially the sort of first example of an environmental portrait. If we think of portraiture at the time, it was almost always taken in the studio. The eye contact was straight down into the lens, almost always. Um, He's broken that rule there. I think that was probably, I can't really imagine Howlett um, dictating how Brunel posed. I think it's the other way around. I think Brunel chose to stand like that. You know, he'd, he'd, he'd been working. This takes, back in the day, this was the typical ISO equivalent of one ISO. There's lots of different takes going on. There's lots of different cameras. He's bored, I think, you know. Um, the cropping of it, um, whether dictated by the physicality of the space at the shipyard or not, I'm not sure. I'd like to think um, not. I'd like to think it was an aesthetic choice by Howlett because it's a very brave choice about talking about scale and power without showing the whole scale. I mean, imagine if he'd, if he'd stepped back and brought the ship into it, how uh, Brunel would have would have disappeared. You know, so he's so he's just like a modern photographer would do now. He's balancing all these elements about what he's trying to say and what he's trying to deliver, finding out how he would have taken that picture, the physicality of this thing was very difficult because that image behind you is rightly famous, but the photographer isn't famous and the tools that he used absolutely are not famous. So I had to sort of reverse engineer from Howlett's pictures the sort of camera he would have used. So that was, that was the first problem. Um, although a camera essentially, even today, is a very, in theory, a very simple thing. It's just a light type box. It had to be to the right dimensions. The lens had to be correct. And the physicality of the thing really dictates where you can put it, for example. I might see a beautiful view somewhere, but know that I can't physically get the camera to it. And then I had to wrestle with the idea of the processes Howlett used, which were pretty poisonous and dangerous. Um, so I decided not to use glass plates and a wet plate collodion process and its intrinsic problems. I used um, sheet film to exactly the same dimensions as how it used glass plates and then developed them in very old school traditional sorts of chemicals and selenium toned them to give a tone similar to the tone that you can see in that picture behind you and an archival quality of 300 years. David was given a small grant in which he had this beautiful camera created. He had travelled the country photographing various Brunellian structures as part of an artistic contribution for the 200th anniversary of Brunel's birth. David kindly offered to show me how he'd recreated some of Howlett's work by taking pictures of me in the studio using his remade camera. So I have actually managed to have a picture taken of me with exactly the same techniques and style that Robert Howlett, one of our greatest photographers, took a man who was actually responsible for taking one of the most iconic photographs in history of Isambard Kingdom Brunel. By having this picture taken of me, I feel I need to get a sense of the location of that pivotal moment in time. I'm heading back to where I started this journey, in London, to see firsthand what has been made of the site of the photograph. The importance of the area has been maintained showing Brunel's legacy. This is a small section of the wooden piles and cross pieces that 150 years ago supported the massive structure of the SS Great Eastern before it was eased into the River Thames. By being here today and feeling the atmosphere, you can sense how Howlett's iconic image has captured the very essence and spirit of the time. This photograph represents much more than the launching of a ship. It's the launching of a new age for a nation. A nation being pulled forward, taking the rest of the world with it, by the launching chain that was Isambard Kingdom Brunel. <laughs>